What is up, everybody? Solomon here. I hope you guys are all having a great Tuesday. I am going to hop right into this. Uh, first and foremost, if you see any scam ads on this video, please do not participate in that. We are going to touch base on XRP price action tonight. We are also going to touch base on this Forbes article, as well as a Ripple statement that they had just put out today, uh, as well as, you know, YRX basically stating that their app is not going to support XRP when it rolls out in January in the United States. Okay, so moving forward here. Uh, and then real quick, I did want to bring up, you know, for those of you that are on Patreon, I have not forgot about you all. Uh, this is the longest time that I have been off from my actual job in probably five or six years. I've very much so been trying to spend that with my family as much as possible. I was obviously not making videos uh, Christmas Eve, Christmas, and then my first one was yesterday, but slowly going to start getting back into the swing of things here, researching and deep diving some of these uh, lesser known coins as well, certainly in the very near future. Um, I go back to work next mon Monday. It's easier to have the dual screen whenever I'm, you know, have a couple of minutes of free time when I'm actually at work, but hopefully I can get some stuff out this weekend. Okay, uh, this is SEC versus Ripple, the cryptocurrency trial of the century. Uh, and, you know, this has larger implications than a lot of people are willing to admit right now. This is not just about Ripple. Uh, this is not just about XRP potentially being deemed a security. This has cascade effects that, that are going to um, dictate the way that blockchain, uh, you know, is, is utilized and developed upon from an um, from an innovation standpoint in the United States. Uh, over, over the course of the next year, like the year, like years, like maybe like the history of all of this may be determined by this one case. And certainly projects that are out there right now may be affected by this. Uh, I would say they will be, uh, depending on how this shakes out. So uh, the cryptocurrency trial of the century, it's a pretty decent article here, uh, just hours before Securities and Exchange Commission. You know what? Let me, I'll read that in a second here. I, I want to get into this first. Uh, I because because yesterday in my video I touched base on this base trend line that I've been watching um, for quite a long time on XRP. Uh, this one goes all the way back to 2014. We see the wick touch down uh, against this base trend line. We can see that we rode down against the breakout trend line, the bottom of this breakout trend line here, uh, and we touched on it in December 2016. Uh, then we broke out, you know, went on our parabolic run all the way from, you know, at the very bottom here, 0 0.003 cents, uh, up to that first initial peak of like 45 cents, then we consolidated and we broke all the way out, you know, $3 and whatever cents. Now we've we've consolidated, well, we were in a bear market here for quite some time, touched on this base trend line again, and this has been the trend line that I've been watching. But it's also interesting to me that if you draw this trend line uh, from the previous bull to the break, or to you know, down through the bear, and then when we broke out of that initial downtrend, uh, we are seeing very similar price action right now. So like this base trend line is concerning to me, but you also get into this, um, this trend line that touches from the, you know, I don't wanna say the top, but probably the most uh, legitimately reasonable trend line that's coming from the peak of the bull market uh, down, to the previous breakout, you can see this breakout here in July. Um, and we actually just touched base on that again. You can see that we did that back in, what is this, January of 2017, we broke below the base trend, touched on the uh, the breakout, you know, the bottom of the consolidation, the the, the bear, for, you know, from the top of the, uh, the bull market, this breakout trend line, uh, and we've just done that again here. So I'm paying extreme, extreme clo uh, close attention to you know these price movements right now just because i'm curious to see if we kind of maybe similarly duplicate maybe we rise above this again this is on the weekly chart by the way here if i go to the daily um which is more zoomed in which is probably more realistic for right now where we're at because the week doesn't close until sunday uh you can see right again here just our january 2017 or late december 2016 we touched on that uh, we just touched on it again here. I'm curious to see if we break above this base trend line up to like 23, 24 cents or whatever, then maybe dip below it again uh, and potentially try to duplicate something like we did here in the past. All of this is dictated very much so upon news, um, you know, but we've seen in the past that uh, price <laughs> dictates news 
Uh, you know, but this is kind of the opposite here. News, certainly, in my opinion, uh, if you're a realist on, on any point whatsoever, uh, news definitely dictated price. Um, you know, th there's there's no arguing that, I don't think. But, you know, I, I haven't sold my XRP. I'm still in this game. Uh, I, I hold and diversify and have multiple different digital assets. XRP happens to be a long-term bag for me. I've always said I'm here till 2025. Um, I know most of you will say that's ridiculous to wait that long, but I think that uh, I don't think anyone would complain if they had, uh, you know, general generational wealth um, potentially in, you know, four years. But we'll see where this goes. I haven't sold. I'm paying attention, though, uh, and we'll go from there. So this is the SEC versus Ripple uh, cryptocurrency trial of the century via Forbes. And this this just puts things into context, too. Literally just hours before Securities and Exchange Commission SEC Chairman Jay Clayton left the building on December 23rd at the end of his tenure, the SEC filed a lawsuit against Ripple Labs Incorporated, alleging that it raised over $1.3 billion through the sale uh, and distribution of the digital asset uh, of XRP without registering. Ripple founded in San Francisco in 2012 operates blah, 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 one of the titans, blah, blah, blah. Ripple's blockchain-like exchange network is claimed to be an efficient, inclusive, and low-cost supplement, some say alternative, to traditional payment networks like the Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunications, which is SWIFT, and others. The SEC suit does not allege fraud, but seeks unspecified damages and to ban Ripple's executives from participation in digital asset market trades. The case appears to impugn one of the few positive aspects of Clayton's 2017 st statement on cryptocurrencies and initial coin offerings, uh, noting that these disruptive transform uh, transformative and efficiency enhancing technologies could facilitate capital formation and provide promising investment opportunities for institutional and Main Street investors alike. More largely, the case reaffirms Clayton's statement in which he claimed supreme SEC authority to regulate every digital asset imaginable, regardless of its design, intention, or use. Uh, pausing real quick here, my personal opinion of what's going on right now is that this is. And I know, like, Eddie would, would disagree with this. Um, I've seen some of her videos. This is, and, and, and this is a very real thing. Um, but it is interesting to, to see that it's like, it, it is like sort of a little bit like a show um, in saying that, you know, we know all the meetings that Ripple has had with regulators, et cetera, et cetera. We've seen the SEC's side. Uh, we've read their statement. We've read their, their document that sues Ripple. Uh, essentially for selling unregistered or un unregulated securities. We have not seen Ripple's side yet. I will show you Ripple's statement here today saying that we are basically going to see their statement come across. It's just interesting to see how this all rolls out. Again, uh, it's very hard for me to sit here and knock people for what moves they're making right now. Uh, and really, um, I could, I don't want to say I could care less, but you know, I have to take care of myself and my family. I'm going to continue presenting my opinions and actual news based on those opinions um, as, as best as I can possibly do. I'm, I'm a human being. I'm not a financial advisor. Uh, I'm not an investment advisor whatsoever, but you know, I can certainly look up news uh, that most people aren't going to look up, or at least many people that aren't in the digital asset space and try to present a little bit of insight, at least my insight into that news. So it's interesting to see kind of the rhetoric and how this all shakes out. Uh, following the suit, the price of XRP plummeted by 25%. So the SEC is supposed to, uh, you know, protect us, right? But they've essentially killed XRP's price. Um, when you take a look at what Ripple announcements have done, they haven't done anything for XRP price. So that's one thing that I also find interesting here. And some trading has been halted. Ripple launched a vigorous response, calling the suit an attack on the emergent cryptocurrency industry at large. The case has interesting parallels to telecommunications in which regulators use obsolete laws to regulate new technologies, undermining U.S. competitiveness and innovation. Clayton's parting shot was his most audacious swipe against an innovative industry he spent four years trying to dominate with authority claimed from a 1934 statute, um, which is the Howey test, in my, I, I believe. Uh, with potentially sweeping implications, the case is shaking up to be the crypto trial of the century. Here are some of the key issues. Uh, is XRP a currency or a security? I'm not going to read this entire thing. Regulatory boundaries uh, of the United States. Do regulators protect China or United States consumers? What is the United States uh, strategy for cryptocurrencies and blockchain? And I think that this will become very clear uh, depending on how this case goes. 
So you can read through this entire thing here. I do want to say, uh, you know, again, whatever is decided upon in this case, and I'm not going to sit here and tell you what the U.S. is going to do because I'm not the regulator in the U.S. Uh, I will certainly tell you that I do not personally believe that XRP is a security. If you would have asked me five or six years ago what my thoughts were before I held XRP and Ripple and before I researched into it, even the research that I've done now, I, it seems very much so that Ripple has removed itself from the ecosystem of XRP in a way that makes it not a security at this point in time. If I would have looked back five, you know, four or five, six years ago, maybe I would be saying something completely different. Um, I just think that the SEC at this point it's very weird that Jay Clayton left, and the last thing that he did in office after Ripple, um, David Schwartz, the special assistant to the president, um, and uh, Jay Clayton, those were the four individuals in that meeting in August of 2018, sat down and had a discussion, along with all of the government talks that Ripple has um, facilitated from a CBDC standpoint. It's just across the board here. So I haven't sold my XRP. That may not be the right move for you. I am not your advisor whatsoever. If you feel like selling, sell. I'm looking for um, opportunities to dollar cost average in this market. I'm certainly paying attention to this base trend line here. Uh, and, you know, if we if we rise above here and maybe touch base on this again, or, you know, don't go into the complete crap house, I may be looking for buying opportunities here. Uh, maybe, maybe the crap house is the buying opportunity. I don't know. All right, this is from Mickey B. Fresh. I'm going to try to end this um, here shortly, but I do want to read Ripple's statement. Actually, let me read Ripple's statement first. Our statement on recent market uh, participant activity, this came out today. The public and press have only heard the story from the SEC side, and we will be filing our response in a few weeks to address these unproven allegations against Ripple. The SEC's decision to file this action is not just about Ripple, it is an attack on the entire crypto industry here in the United States. We've always said that there is a dangerous lack of regulatory clarity for cryptocurrency in the US. Their lawsuit has already affected countless innocent XRP retail holders with no connection to Ripple. That has also needless, needlessly muddied the waters for exchanges, market makers, and traders. The SEC has introduced more uncertainty into the market, actively harming the community they are supposed to be protecting, which we've seen that very much so. It is no surprise that some market participants are reacting conservatively as a result. In the meantime, Ripple will continue to operate and support all products and customers in the United States and globally. The majority of our customers are not in the United States, and overall XRP volume is largely traded outside of the U.S. There are clear rules of the road for using XRP in the U.K., Japan, Switzerland, and Singapore, for example. For eight years, we've built products that help hundreds of customers solve pain points around global payments. We will defend our company and look forward to settling this matter in court to finally get clarity for the United States cryptocurrency industry. On a parallel note, we also look forward to working with all of the commissioners and the SEC's new leadership. Uh, we know that the, the, the gentleman replacing Jay Clayton at the SEC is more pro-crypto than Jay Clayton was, obviously, um, once appointed. In all, the SEC chair, six of his directors from each SEC division and the SEC's chief economist and the SEC's general counsel have now departed. Uh, many left just last week, which is also, you know, interesting with that parting shot across the bow, as we talked about multiple times. Our steadfast commitment to constructive regulatory engagement has not changed. Now we got Mickey B. Fresh here at Flair Network. So this is Flair. Should be a focal point for all XRP community. This is a brilliantly designed network that was built for us, the XRP slash Flair community to participate at no risk, earn Flair rewards, and vote on governance. Community should prepare and be up to date with Flair. XRP Army needs to level up. I agree with that. Uh, then he goes on, uh, you know, this is a, a digital asset investor. Please stop saying XRP is not for us. It is absolutely for everyone globally. XRP is nothing without the protocol it is built upon. Public decentralized network and currency exchange. XRP's global accessibility by anyone is crucial in its design. Know what you own question mark i know what i own and i support mickey's statements there 100 i will say um multiple people including myself uh, we know that flair we know that spark everything you know flair essentially ties uh xrpl into DeFi and smart contracts uh it gives those capabilities there are certainly way more that's going to be developed upon flair um and it's not just the actual flair network here with spark 
Um, this is, you know, going to be another protocol that we're going to see, like similar to Ethereum, how you have hundreds of projects built upon Ethereum. You've got a lot of good actors. You've got some bad actors. Um, we'll see where this goes. But I think Mickey is 100% hits the um, hits the nail hits the nail on the head uh, with the hammer here. Um, we all need to do our due diligence and research consistently. Uh, XRP certainly is for me. Um, I that's why I hold XRP. So that's why I continue to hold it too. This is Flare Fusion at Fusion underscore FLR. Uh, now they DM'd me a couple of times today. I have to look into this project, but I'm not going to get into this project right now. I did want to touch base on this though. This is Coinbase is not allowing XRP withdrawals. Now they are allowing XRP withdrawals from what I've seen, but they are just very much so delayed. So if you're utilizing Coinbase still, uh, and I'm not going to lie to you, I hold a tiny bit of XRP on Coinbase just because from a regulatory standpoint, it's one of the more regulatory friendly exchanges in the United States. Do I like Coinbase? Do I trade based off Coinbase? Do I buy and send based on Coinbase? Certainly not. Um, but be very cognizant if you are utilizing Coinbase to withdraw XRP to a wallet, etc. cetera, uh, whatever you happen to be doing. Um, Flare Fusion is stating that, that, that it's not allowing it. If you read down through the comments here, I believe that it's uh, more so just delayed. I will keep you up to date uh, as news develops upon that. But we know that Coinbase stated that they are not trading XRP. I think it's as of January 19th. Um, and that just limit orders as of yesterday. So uh, now I saw this today as well. Wirex to exclude embattled XRP from United States launch. I talked about that in the very beginning of this video. As fellow United Kingdom uh, crypto firms plan their responses, UK firms. So as a quick note right here, Wirex will not include XRP in the app version when it launches in January. Uh, Zigloo, if you happen to utilize Zigloo, which I do not, uh, has decided to also suspend XRP trading as of January 12th. Uh, now, last but not least, uh, I actually do support Unstoppable Domains. If you're interested in that, uh, check out the link in my, um, I'll put it in the thread or whatever. Uh, if not, certainly don't. I could care less. Uh, that's, this is a pay ID. Actually, what is it now? Pay whatever the whatever the new name is for pay id that because of the australian pay id the uh the issue um this is from unstoppable domains so these are some of the highlights from uh from this year Twenty five thousand decentralized websites 300k blockchain domain sold uh now if you're not aware that sex.crypto domain sold for ninety thousand uh, dollars on OpenSea, so that's pretty big uh these domains range in price obviously uh i have a couple of my own. I have, you know, the King Solomon one, uh, et cetera, et cetera. They're integrated into Chainlink as well. Uh, first time an NFT has ever been custodied by a crypto exchange. My Ether Wallet is an official reseller. Support from 40 plus applic uh, applications, including Coinbase Wallet, Huobi, and Trust Wallet. Uh, you get the gist, right? If you want to check that out, check it out. I am an affiliate uh, affiliate of them. I'm Regard besides uh, Unstoppable Domains and uh, Stetis, by the way, I should have shown a Stetis tweet. Stetis does those XRP community posters. I'm a I'm an affiliate of him as well. I don't get paid for it. I just wanted a free poster. Uh, so that was <laughs> that was the uh, affiliate uh, reward that I chose through Stetis. Um, and the Unstoppable Domains thing I just thought was cool. Simplification of crypto uh, tied in with uh, Ripple. Um, what is it? Pay, pay? Oh, it's going to piss me off now. What is PayID branded rebranded to? So that I don't leave this uh, video on a on a terror. Okay, it's pay snap, pay something, pay string. God. So yeah, unstoppable domain. Uh, unstoppable domains is a pay string initiative. You know, along with many other like Dewalla, um, tons, tons, and tons. Okay. So anyways, I'm gonna get into some more deep dives here as this week goes along. Hopefully for Patreon. Uh, I'm just trying to really relax and try to get my, my head together. There's been a lot of news lately, but I am trying to keep you guys up to date as much as possible. Uh, I do owe um, Jordan Freed from uh, Hedera Hashgraph or HBAR Labs, as it is now, uh, an email, which I certainly plan on sending because I do want to do another um, interview uh, with, you know, what's going on with HBAR and Hedera Hashgraph, HBAR Labs, all of that. I plan on doing that before my break. Uh, quote unquote vacation is over as well. All right. I really hope you guys had a fantastic day, morning, afternoon, evening, where, wherever you happen to be. Uh, and again, remember, uh, this is not just about Ripple, the company. Uh, I believe in XRP. Um, 
very much so as a standalone digital asset. I believe in the XRPL. I believe in the protocol. I believe in what Ripple, the company, is trying to do. That is not to say that you need to do the same thing that I do. Uh, all of us need to make our own decisions. But I will say 100% that whatever decision is handed down based on this case, whenever that decision does get handed down, it will certainly have a domino effect on the rest of the industry as a whole. And it will certainly have implications as to the United States' ability to maintain a competitive advantage um, in this new internet of value that is certainly fast approaching. All right, I love you guys. I will talk to you later.